Mentors, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the health and wellness phase. So of course, naturally, today's activity is just another one to add to the health and ways armory there. Uh, so today's activities are focused on hygiene. Yes, hygiene. Oh my goodness, where do we start? Well, first, let's start understanding why teaching hygiene to this age um, or to middle schoolers is so important and so relevant. Again, so we first probably want to understand why teaching hygiene to this age is so important. So let's start with, did you know, where does it all start? Many kids start with the sweaty sock syndrome. Yes, the dreaded sweat, sweaty sock syndrome. It's like a tongue teaser. Um, I was friends with somebody who had the sweaty sock syndrome. It was pretty scary. I always felt like you know there was a piece of cheese laying around. But anyway, this is just the beginning. So most parents and adults, of course, um, like many things, they assume kids will naturally learn um, you know, what they need to know or what it takes to have good hygiene. But unfortunately, as you may personally experience with young ones in your family or maybe even at Teamworks, this is not the case. They just don't naturally learn. Um, and then, you know, further, so let's talk again to the why. Kids with poor hygiene can also face many negative consequences. Some can be medical, like developing a rash or infection. Um, but at this age, um, I think what they really could suffer from is developing a bad reputation with their peers, which I'm sure they don't want. And of course, you know, that kind of thing, getting developing a reputation or having people call you names, of course, can have an effect on their self-esteem. So, of course, having good hygiene is so important, or developing these good hygiene or habits. Additionally, you know, we're covering this topic because i got a couple points for you. Elementary students don't typically shower every day, and they really don't need to. But once that puberty kicks in, of course, they need to. Daily showering is essential. And as I'm sure you all know as adults, you know, there are those spots that need a little extra soap and water. Um, next is deodorant. Um, again, they have this skewed perception of, you know, they're sweating, um, and so they either don't wear deodorant or they don't put it on every day because, you know, they're using it based on their idea of, you know, what the physical, physical activity for the day is. But again, when that puberty kicks in, you know, they have to wear deodorant, you know, because those sweat glands become more active and there's that chemical composition of sweat, you know, it changes and it causes strong odor. Um, and how about the changing clothes thing? Again, that's part of your hygiene. So before puberty kicks in, you know, kids get away, away with wearing the same shirt, socks, underwear. I'm talking to you men. <laughs> they try to get away with wearing the same underwear, um, thinking nobody will notice. But of course, when puberty kicks in, no longer the case. And lastly, it's dental care. Adolescents and teens can get pretty lazy, even some of adults. I'm guilty, I don't floss all the time. Um, but we can get pretty lazy about our oral hygiene. So again, we want to encourage our kids to take care of their teeth uh, because not only does it prevent tooth decay, which is really important, but bad breath. And again, when they're at this age, when they're, they're self-conscious about everything, we don't want them to have bad breath. Um, and not to mention, if they're not taking care of their, key, their teeth now, it will cost them in the future if you know what I mean, all right? So, uh, we also want to dispel some of those hygiene legends that are out there, like shaving makes your hair grow back faster and thicker, or that greasy foods cause acne, or that getting a tan will cure acne, etc. Um, so, at the end of the day, um, with today's activities, uh, we want our kids to understand that hygiene isn't this arbitrary set of rules, but it's important to one's well-being. Further, uh, because our kids are on the verge of adulthood, we want them to start developing or adopting healthy hygiene habits now, um, because if they're taking care of themselves, they're likely to be more happy and have good self-esteem. And we know what that all means, right? Good self-esteem, good choices, dealing with challenges in life, etc. Um, so, you know, again, we'll keep them safe from assaults from their peers or having health issues or having costly medical or dental bills and so on. So having good hygiene really does matter. And one more note, uh, mentors, before we dive into today's fun activities, we want to make sure that um, you don't, you know, you're, you're really monitoring what's going on with your students as you're having this conversation. Don't allow them to start name calling and pointing fingers at each other. So we want to keep that conversation positive, more a little general on the surface, as well as I want mentors, again, we always say this and you know this from training, keep that open mind, right? Keep that open mind um, and just be a little sensitive that some of our kids might be homeless or living in a situation that keeps them from practicing good hygiene, all right? So, but we want to be sensitive to that. So just something to think about. 
All right, let's start on our activities. Our question of the day, can good personal hygiene make a person feel good about his or herself? Of course it can, right? So if you feel good about yourself, you'll feel awesome and you'll tackle the world. But if we're not feeling a little good about our hygiene, I don't know if you're one of those folks you have a stain, it might you know, affect you all day long, or you forgot your deodorant, <laughs> it might affect your self-esteem. So see how it really plays into your self-esteem. So if we're practicing good hygiene, then we're gonna feel good about ourselves. All right, so that's your question of the day. You'll go around, get their input on that. And then we're gonna start off with our fun energizers. This one's called but Bad. Good hygiene, again, bad, good hygiene. And we've got some questions for you. Got a couple questions here. We have one, two, three questions. We've got answers for you. You'll throw out some questions to your kids. Are you normal? Um, and then, you know, you'll have a, let them and, you know, answer, and of course, you'll give them an answer. Have you been called an adolescent? Do you know what an adolescent means? And of course, we have an answer. What is personal hygiene? Now you're really gonna find out, do they know what hygiene is? And then we have an answer. Afterwards, after you've done that back and forth, had that get that conversation going. Then we have a script for you, and then mentors, I strongly suggest you read the script, and it's about going through puberty and how normal it is, and that there are gonna be changes that we all go through, and et cetera. After you go over that, then we have a fun little quiz. Again, let's, um, uh, I encourage, I should say, that the kids, you know, fill out the quiz privately. Um, um, there are six questions on there. They're multiple choice, like what is personal hygiene, A, B, C, or D. How often should you get dental checkups, A, B, C, or D. So they mark it and they can keep it to themselves. I call it a personal quiz. And then when they're done, you'll give them about five minutes because it's only six questions. We have an answer key and hopefully... Um, um, you're sharing with them just some good stuff, good stuff about taking care of themselves. So like how often should you get a dental checkup? It's one to two times a year and maybe our kids didn't know that. And so on and so on and so on. Like even when to use sun, sunscreen, etc. Alright, so a little quiz. Uh, you want to keep it private. If kids want to share, let them share. If they don't, it's okay. Alright, it's okay. And hopefully you'll encourage them to mark the right answer so that when they go home and if they want to review it again, they can, you know, have the correct answer for the quiz. All right, now we're gonna move on to our main activity. It's called My Hygiene. And this one again, more conversational. We give you a dental fact sheet, a dental fact sheet. We've highlighted some of the good ones and one fun one in there. But you can go over with your kids with the ones we highlighted because you're not gonna have time to go through the whole fact sheet. But these are some that we thought would be good. Make sure every student gets one so that they can take it home and read it at their leisure. Um, but like, here's one. Dentists have recommended that a toothbrush be, be kept at least six feet away from a toilet to avoid airborne particles resulting from the flush. Um, so I remember I learned this about 10 years ago, and I promise you my toothbrush is uh, in a safe right now because um, I want to avoid airborne particles. Uh, but anyway, you'll go over your, your fun fact sheet, your dental fun fact sheet, and then you'll move into a fun relay race. So you'll split their team up into two groups. Um, they're each going to get a set of words and a set of fill-in-the-blank sentences. Again, words, and then you want to put the words and fill in the blank. So you'll put two piles for each team, team A, team B, they'll get a word and sentences, and um, you'll put the piles at the end of the room, and then relay style, one by one, they're gonna run up, and they're gonna try to fill, you know, find the word and fill in the blank, all right? So it's a fill in the blank matching kind of game. Um, I recommend you put all the words in the sentences face down, that teams can strategize. If the first member wants to come up and flip all the words over, I would allow it. I would let them flip it up because then it'll help them see the bigger picture when they're matching words and sentences, all right? So it's a fun uh, fill in the blank matching kind of competition. Of course, the team to finish first wins. And then when you're done with that and you've got them all sweaty, hopefully they're wearing their deodorant, <laughs> then you're gonna break them into pairs and in their pairs, they're gonna get a, to do another fun interactive activity and it pretty much is a crossword puzzle. So for every pair, they get their own crossword puzzle. You'll time it, maybe give them five to 10 minutes to fill in the crossword puzzle. Call time's up and then see who has the most correct answers or who finished the whole crossword puzzle. And of course, that could be your fun little winning pair, all right? So I always like to end with a great quote, and here's our quote for the day. It's related to hygiene. Take care of your body. It's the only place you truly have to live. Will, signing out.